There are some people among us who could be among the most dangerous drivers on our roads, repeat offenders for drinking and driving, but they never go to jail. We all share the road with them, diplomats from other countries. Tonight, Tisha Thompson and the News 4i team take you on a six-year journey to uncover documents never before released to the public to show you what some of those diplomatic drivers are really doing on our local highways. It took us six years to find Rufin Manzanza. Stop following me. Okay, stop following me. He's been charged with more than a dozen of the most serious driving violations, but has never gone to jail. And the News 4i team found he's not alone. In 2008, we filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the U.S. Department of State and spent six years fighting to get this package. Inside a list never before released to the public, hundreds of diplomats pulled over for the most serious driving offenses. The records show one third caught drinking and driving, including a Russian first secretary charged with a DWI and trying to elude police in Chevy Chase, and a defense attache for Yemen, his Mercedes involved in a hit and run in Great Falls. He'd been pulled over three years earlier for reckless driving on Gallows Road. Most on this list were pulled over for reckless driving. The son of the former Cameroon ambassador pulled over for going 93 in a 55 in Chantilly. And the first secretary of Jordan clocked going 100 miles per hour in a 55 in Fairfax. One year later, police charged him with DWI while driving the same Mercedes in Rockville. These have confidential markings. That's a classification. We brought the documents to Tom Blanton at the National Security Archive. And all it takes is some bureaucrat to think, oh, this might be sensitive, this might be embarrassing, and they can put a classification stamp on it. Blanton has spent his career fighting and winning access to politically sensitive documents, Iran-Contra, CIA experiments, White House emails. I was totally surprised at the number of the violations, the sense of immunity, impunity, that so many of these diplomats repeat violators. But our records are not complete. Some were withheld for national security reasons. It's supposed to protect our homeland security, that exemption. Instead, it's covering up for some diplomats. After tracking down the individual tickets, the I-team discovered the vast majority of diplomatic drivers were pulled over in Fairfax County. Many repeat violators with additional charges not even on the State Department's list. And one country has had four times as many names than any other, Saudi Arabia. Reckless driving, DUI, possession of marijuana. Remember, this is a country where it is illegal to possess alcohol or drugs. But these same court records show most were never prosecuted because of diplomatic immunity. The State Department refused a request for an on-camera interview, but did tell the I team, even though diplomats don't go to court, they do tell their boss, the ambassador. And if there is a repeat offender, the State Department can kick them out of the country, which it says it's done 45 times in the last two years. When we searched court records, we found a few letters from embassies apologizing, including this letter about the ambassador's son promising it will never happen again. We found the children of diplomats make up more than a third of our list, but the State Department says they only get diplomatic immunity until they're 21. Mr. Manzanza, I'm Tisha Thompson with the News 4i team. Which is how we found Rufin Manzanza, the son of Congo's defense attache, coming out of the courthouse after pleading guilty to driving on a suspended license after he had already been pulled over twice for DUI. Do you think you could hurt or kill someone? Are you allowed to do this in the Congo? Are you allowed to, um, to video me, interview me? I am. In the United States, we're allowed to videotape you. So my question is, is are you allowed to do this in the Congo? Can you stop following me? Sorry? Can you stop following me? Well, we just want to know you, if you I think what you're I, doing is dangerous. I don't have time right now. i got to go somewhere. The State Department tells the I-Team it did not know about Manzanza's repeated violations, but is now looking into his driving record. And that, Blanton says, is why the State Department needs to release these records every year instead of trying to cover them up. If they can drive drunk on our streets, we're all at risk. If they can get away with it, we're all at risk. These folks' bad acts should not be covered with a classification stamp. That's why it really matters. 
Blanton wants Congress to pass a law requiring the State Department to post the list of diplomatic drivers caught breaking our laws on its website every year. He says you can't throw them in jail, but diplomats will stop breaking our laws if their names suddenly end up on a very public website. We do need to point out, though, don't we, why diplomatic immunity yes. is honored. Uh, yes. I mean, there is a reason why we have diplomatic immunity, and it is because <laughs> we need our folks when we go overseas to be able to do their jobs without worrying about getting arrested for trumped-up charges. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we need diplomatic immunity. There's a reason why all the countries respect it, but the problem is, is you get these guys who over and over and over again abuse it. Take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Thanks.